I walked over there to the fence line and was like looking in the woods, looking under the fence to see who was trapped in the fence, looking in the trees. But then I saw the shed. The noise was coming from inside that shed. I was at my husband's parents' house and there's all kinds of noises, squirrels, birds. They have goats, livestock, and I kept hearing the bird call. Honestly, it was like a tiny pterodactyl where I found out it was coming from the neighbor's house. And at one point in the bird call, I heard what sounded like a distressed kitten. So I went back and I told Josh's siblings that there's a kitten and it's coming from the shed. Josh's sister was like, there's a dog over there. So you can't just go over there. We were able to get a hold of them and try to go over there and see if he would look for the kitten. But with the neighbor, his dog came out of the house too. After only like 60 seconds, the neighbor had come back and said, yeah, I don't see anything, don't hear anything. When we were leaving the neighbor's house, Mr. Stott turned around and he asked me, what's your gut telling you? I said, there's a kitten, it's there, I can feel it. Everyone went inside and I just kind of stood outside and I'd heard the meows start up again. And so my, my thought was, when no one's looking, I'm not jump the fence and get this kitten. But I can't be that dishonest. And he's a bigger dog and I really didn't want to mess with it. And it just, it started crying again and ran back in the house and I told Josh's dad, I was like, it, it's crying again, please call your neighbor. And we see the guy coming around the fence with just an itty bitty little skinny kitten. Mr. Stott had asked him, would you mind if we cared for the kitten? And the neighbor said, no, no, And just handed her over the fence and right, right to me, I just opened my arms up and so I just I called her right up against me. And it's just a sense of relief. <coughs> Found like a crate and some blankets and a stuffed animal. She would like stuff her face as much through one of the holes as she could. It was goofy and it showed me that she wanted to try to get out and, and to be with someone as much as possible. Whenever you would start to pet her, like behind her ear, she would just like flop over on her side and start playing with her feet. <laughs> Brittany was with me and Josh for I think three days. I reached out to our uh, foster kitten coordinator and so I dropped her off. I knew it was for the better and I couldn't help but cry because it was really sad. And then it turns out that Birdie was gonna be put with Toodles and they grew up you know, together for the first two months and they were inseparable from that first night. And it brought me so much peace to know that you know, they had a friend along the way. Absolutely, if you hear a noise that you think could be a kitten or a puppy or an animal in distress, as long as it's safe, check it out. Because you could be that animal's only hope. Like, comment, and subscribe.